Hey, all right, well, welcome to another video. This one, we're going to frame a rough window opening, doing the, the framing. I wanted to also show you the, this gun the, that we bought last year. It's a cordless, battery powered. I love the sound of it. it sounds kind of futuristic. Uh, we use three inch nails. I want to show you these. If you take a look at these, you can see the, the red right there. That's a glue. The theory is that when you drive that nail, this is what I've heard, is it going through the wood, it creates friction enough to slightly warm up this glue, helping the nail to stick and stay in longer. I'll tell you something else about the nails in, in just a minute. But we're going to build a rough opening. We'll do the header first. The, um, the, the rough opening is three feet wide by four feet high on these particular windows. So when you do that, we're going, boy, there's so much to say. We have, uh, there'll be a stud, a jack stud or a cripple, uh, and a cripple. But we'll, we'll start with this. The, uh, this is the two by 10. We add three inches to the length of the header. Uh, because there's going to be a jack stud that comes up under the bottom of that. Use half inch plywood. Okay, so we put the header together. We're going to nail that off. That's uh, with my, I just had my that shoulder surgery a month ago, five weeks. I'm able to pick this up now, but I can't do much more than that. So I'd get some assistance here. Still getting used to the, has to wind up again. Okay, so we've nailed the header together. Okay, so next we're going to attach a stud on each side. The, the, su the studs on the side are actually called king studs. So we're going to nail that on first. Make sure we line everything up. And we'll nail a jack on the side. So the opening is going to be three feet wide, four feet high. So I've cut the, the jack stud four feet, which works nice. You can get two out of an eight footer. When you nail, let's see. Let's get a close up of this. When you nail a, a, a jack stud or a cripple onto another stud, it's good to put one on near the bottom, one near the top, in case there's any warping trying to happen. Okay, and then the sill down there like that. This is slightly warped, so we're going to work that a little bit. Make sure that's good and tight, pull that up. So I usually nail through this way and I put one in through the sill into the cripple or the jack. Or two. <laughs> Two never hurts. What a beautiful spring day, by the way. Wow. If there were, if this was a door opening and didn't have the uh, the sill, this uh, stud that comes up on the side of the header is called a king stud. The one, the uh, I call it a jack stud, but some people call it a queen queen stud. Call it whatever you want. Oh. Whenever I nail, I prefer to nail through this way into the stud. This is bigger, so it doesn't move as easily as this. If you, if you nail it through this way, it tends to push that out, and you have to 
pound them together. It's just more work. Oh, that, that looks really good. I think it depends a lot on where you live, what you call things. <laughs> I, I call these cripples. I don't know why. I guess because that's what my dad taught me. And out of nails again. Let's go get some. Make sure those are nice and flush. So there'll be uh, one or two more cripples, depends on where the 16 centers come. I don't usually put those in until we've got the wall, until we're framing the wall and putting this in to the wall. So we make all of these up ahead, the doors, the door openings, um, so that these components just go into the wall when we're, when we're working. Okay, so that's it in a nutshell how we do window openings. Someone had asked about guns, nailing guns, um, as far as a recommendation. I've always used the Bostitch pneumatics, uh, but now we're switching over to the uh, cordless, battery powered. Um, they both have their advantages. The nice thing about the, the corded is they're a lot faster. Well, no, they're faster, not a lot faster. These, these go pretty quick, but um, the, the cost per gun is, uh, these are probably a little bit more, partly because of the batteries, or mostly because of the batteries. Um, we're still not, so we have, we have two framers, two finish nailers. The finish nailers, we're going to be using them this year on uh, uh, furring strips to create a board and batten effect on T111. That way the, the head won't uh, be very big. It'll, it'll look pretty nice. These, this is a sheathing nailer for putting on plywood or T111. Um, I'm still not sure this year how, how we're going to handle that because that's so handy and I don't have a, really a sheather. We have the framer that will take smaller nails, but it's not quite the same. We tried it last year. It was just slow. So I may still stick with that. I'm not sure. But um, I've really liked the Bostitch brand. We've had them for 30 years probably, different ones, not, not these. These we, we bought last year. And the thing about cordless, battery powered, is when you get one, you're kind of committed to that brand. So I guess you'd want to weigh that in pretty, pretty heavily because the batteries are, well, all the batteries are in the shop. But they're, it's pretty easy to spend $100 on a battery as compared to the pneumatics. You know, they just need an air compressor to run everything. So there you have it. So, hey, thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. If you're not already a subscriber, hit the like button, make a comment, and um, we'll have more videos coming out. Thanks again.